Welcome to the Gateway to the West. It's the Gateway ARCA 150 for the ARCA Remax Series, race number 18 of the 2007 season, and the points race is really starting to heat up. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Allen alongside of Phil Parsons. Now we The 2007 ARCA season was well underway and heating up as 22-year-old rookie Michael McDowell was closing the gap to points leader and eight-time series champion Frank Kimmel. At this time, Kimmel had won the previous seven straight ARCA championships, so anyone who could come close to him in the points was a huge storyline. This was race 18 of the 23 race season, so races were becoming ever more important to both drivers in the championship race. Michael McDowell's teammate, Josh Wise, would start on pole, with Kimmel starting back in 14th place, and McDowell himself starting 10th. With championship contenders buried in the mid-pack, it would be a battle of who could pass cars the quickest to get to the front. Josh Wise led the 40-car field to green in his lone pole of his limited 2007 Argus season, where he would only take part in 11 races. Good start for Josh Wise. He will take the point. Mark Mitchell will fall in just behind him. Justin Allgaier. Michael Annette, another name that kept coming up in the garage as the car to watch tonight. And only two starts before for Michael Annette, but he finished third in his very first start from the pole at Iowa Speedway. Look at Michael McDonald on the inside. He would lead until the first caution of the day, where Brian Kozlowski ran into trouble with the front left tire. Pacific only on speed. And you see smoke rolling out from underneath that number five. And that is Brian Keselowski. He has blown the left front tire, and so we're under our first caution. Another left front tire problem. We saw Michael Annette have one. McDowell would come down pit lane from fifth position as rival Frank Kimmel stayed out. Wise would lead once again until the first multi-car wreck that occurred on lap 34. Car along in front of him, and we hear the caution has come out once again. You see the smoke and the problems on the back stretch. That's the 98 right there of Aaron Crocker. Aaron Crocker and Debbie, Gabby DiCarlo are on board on that great clip. Chevrolet also involved. Jason Hedleski. Aaron Crocker turned the 75 of Jason Hedleski around after receiving contact from Ryan Fisher himself. Now remember Fisher, he's going to show up in a big way later in the video. Fortunately, none of these drivers were out of the race after this wreck, although they all had to pit for repairs. This would be Hedleski's final career arc of season, a career that lasted seven years. A few years prior, he had attempted a cup race and finished 43rd place. His only other NASCAR start was in the truck series, where he finished 31st. Leaders Josh Wise and most of the lead lap cars that hadn't pitted came down pit road, except Dominic Casola and a couple others who stayed out and took the lead. Dominic led until McDowell took the lead from him about 10 laps later. 40. Yeah, essentially, as you see Michael McDowell try to close up on the back through the center of the corner on, of Dominic Casola, he would be able to, Michael's going to move to the inside, got a good run off of turn number four, going to move to the inside, going to try to beat him down to turn number one before the downshift. He didn't make it past the start-finish line in front of Dominic Casola, but now he's gotten by him. This is where he wants to lead that lap, get the five bonus points, and again, continue to chip away on that lead that Frank Kimmel has. Right. Not too long after this, Mark Mitchell made an ambitious move, taking out Dexter Bean and nearly taking out championship leader Frank Kimmel. Try to get by Dominic Casola. Mark Mitchell looks to the inside, Kimmel on the outside, three wide. Kimmel's going to have to check up because the five, Ryan Keselowski up, oh, 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 he's right behind him, and he slides him, oh, very close to hitting Frank Kimmel there was Dexter Bean. Mark Mitchell involved in this one. You see the four. That's Dexter Bean in the six up top. And it looked as though there was a little more contact there as they were trying to go through between these cars that were wrecked on the racetrack. Although a couple other cars collected some damage, Mitchell and Bean would be the only two to retire after this wreck. So that as it was happening, again, there's Kimmel on the high side. Involved in this is the four and the six. The six goes sliding up. It's so close to Kimmel right there. Unbelievable, just mere inches between the six of Dexter Bean and the 46 of Frank Kimmel. We saw the 21 also sliding through that. That was Jeremy Petty. Yeah, I think they were running. Michael McDowell led on the restart and continued to lead until this happened. Lap cars, and you know, you got three fast cars that are yourself to the front, and we made it, uh, ended up getting three wide somehow, I think, and I was in the middle and found a hole, and I thought I made it, but uh, I guess I got piled somehow, and just unfortunate. 
Ryan Fisher in the 25 rolls down the back stretch. The caution has come out. Debris all over the racetrack. Remember Ryan Fisher? Yeah, well, here's his big appearance I was referring to just a few minutes ago. During an interview with Dexter Bean, one of the wildest and unexpected flips in Arca's recent history occurred. The red flag immediately flew on lap 63. Brian Silas turned Patrick Sheltra into Fisher, launching him into the air and into the catch fence and sending him rolling. Wow! Up into the wall. Patrick Sheltra hits him, slides him up into the wall, and then the rolls begin. It looked like the 25 of Ryan Fisher just launched over the 60 of Patrick Sheltra. You see that car slid for a little bit right on the... After about 25 minutes of repairs to the catch fence and cleanup, the red flag was lifted and the cars took the green flag once again on lap 68. With only 35 laps to go, another tire failure claimed a victim, this time Peter Shepard. Now with Brian Clausen, first out for his spot. Oh, and problems. We're hearing car in the wall. That's Pete Shepard in the 39. The caution comes back out. That's exactly what Michael McDowell and his crew chief wanted to see. Yeah, I, I think Patrick Donahue has to keep Michael McDowell on the racetrack. You know, we're inside of 40 laps to go right now. It's very difficult to pass at this racetrack. I don't think Michael McDowell will want to give up the lead. I think they're just going to hope that this reduce. The dominating two machine of McDowell faced a dilemma. If he pitted, everyone else would stay out, but if he stayed out, everyone else would pit. Ultimately, the two crew decided to pit, which handed Brian Clausen the lead. He would lead on the restart with 30 laps to go. And we've had five cautions, the green flag back in the air, we're back to racing. Two and three wide, almost on the start of this one. Ryan Clausen slow on the restart. He was leading when the green flag came out. Here comes Justin Algar to the inside. They've got the lap car of Aaron Crocker. They were just unlapped himself right in front of them, side by side for the lead. Justin on the bottom. Justin Algar would take the lead from Clausen on the restart before a caution came out, just four laps after that. Michael McDowell, oh, and problems. We've got the caution back out. That's the 75, Jason Hedleski. The 75 of Hedleski turned his car around for the second time of the race, which would prove untimely for Allgaier. Allgaier would lead on the restart, but would be passed just three laps later by Brian Clausen. Real strong getting him. Justin's running a little bit higher line right there. Keeps that momentum up as he goes down the back stretch. But Brian Clausen looking to the inside now, side by side for the lead. And is able to clear him. Use that Ernie Elliott horsepower to clear the 16 of Justin Algar, a new leader. Brian Clausen out in front of the field now. Justin Algar running second. He would lead the final 18 laps and win the race. He did twice. The first one was at Lakeland, the second one at Nashville. Coming out of turn number four, checkered flag will fly. It is the 40 of Brian Clawson, your winner. Three wide as they come across the start finish line. They're battling for six. Michael Annette gets the spot. Andy Lally seventh, Justin Marks in eight. McDowell would make a great comeback in the race to finish third. However, he would fall just short of the championship to Frank Kimmel. Brian Clausen seemed to be on the rise. However, this is not where his story ends. I'm going to pass it to my buddy Darian to share the rest of it. After that win, it seemed like Brian Clausen's career in NASCAR was going to be on the rise, but unfortunately, this would be his only win in stock car racing. While Chip Ganassi Racing is one of the most recognizable teams in all of motorsports, during this era, they were definitely on the downswing. He made five starts in the NASCAR Busch Series in 2007, only scoring a best finish of 18th. The following season in 2008, he made a total of 21 starts for the team. While most of of his runs were considered lackluster, he showed flashes of greatness at times, scoring his first and only career pole at Daytona while getting his only career top five at Kentucky. 
even though he was only 19, his NASCAR career after 2008 was basically over, which in my opinion was absolutely unfair. His racing career, however, was far from it. While continuing to race on dirt, he would achieve a childhood dream in IndyCar, competing in the greatest race of them all, the Indianapolis 500. He was definitely talented enough to find a full-time IndyCar ride if he wanted to, but instead continued to race in midget cars where, unfortunately, on August 6, 2016, Brian Clausen would pass away. But his true legacy is not in racing, but the lives he saved after his passing. The Clausen family helped run one of the largest national organ donation campaigns ever. With each person who was a donor, five people's lives had been saved. That means Clausen's death will potentially have saved nearly 20,000 lives. All right, so big shout out to Black Flags Matter for coming on, so make sure to show them some love. Also, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Always like making these type of videos, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.